everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this pineapple cat bandana that you can see Melba modeling here. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this pineapple bandana, you'll need yarn and you'll probably be going for yellow and green, but you know, why not make a pineapple in a different color? So I've got this green for the leaves and the ties and the yellow for the main pineapple area. The, this is a two weight mercerized cotton that I'm using today, but I've made it previously in this yarn here is a four weight and this is a double strand of a two weight. So I've used, um, you know, a more, more medium weight yarn for this previous incarnation, but, um, you know, you can use pretty much whatever yarn you like. Um, you might, depending on the size of your cat, you may not be able to go super bulky, but, you know, or, you know, even chunky. Stick down around sort of the two to four weight of yarn and you, you should be fine. You'll need a crochet hook and I'm using a 3.5 millimeter. A darning needle to weave in your ends and do a little bit of hand sewing. A pair of scissors. And an optional tape measure to take a measurement of your cat's neck circumference. But as always, I'll include in the description box below a guide to standard cat neck sizes. And you can just work from that and tailor your ties to a ballpark figure. You don't need an exact measurement for this project. Okay, so to make this pineapple bandana, you'll need to know how to make a slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to slip stitch, single crochet, double crochet and triple crochet for that main pineapple area. For these leaves we'll be using single crochet, half double crochet and a slip stitch and we'll be making these ties by using a chain and a slip stitch. From there, so we'll be making um, we'll be making this in two portions. So we'll make this main pineapple area, then we'll make the leaves attached to the ties, and then we'll attach them with a little bit of hand sewing. And the hand sewing is optional, but we'll just attach the leaves a little bit more securely so they sit a bit more flat um, with some basic hand sewing. So it is beginner friendly, and I think a lot of fun to make up. So let's get started. Okay, so take your green. So in this, actually just to show you this here, in this main pineapple area, you'll be starting off with, let's turn it over, that's easier. We'll be starting off this, with this area in green and then we'll change color and expand out from there for the pineapple, okay? So take your green, or whatever is your equivalent of green, and make a slip knot onto your hook. And then we're going to chain eight. Two, three, let's get a bit more yarn. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, now we're going to slip stitch into that first chain, so the furthest chain from the hook, to create a loop. So just insert your hook and pull through two loops. So you've got a little loop that we're going to start working into. Now we're going to chain two here and turn. Now this won't, in this row, this will not count as a double crochet, okay? So it's just to give you a little bit of height. So now we're going to place 12 double crochets into our little ring. So yarning over, insert the hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So insert eight, sorry, 12, 12 double crochets into your little loop. I'm going to go ahead and finish that off camera and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so before you finish your last double crochet, we're going to change color. Now, if you've got a different way to change color, please feel free to do it your way. But we're going to change to our yellow. So you can finish off that last double crochet with your new color. So just pull through your loop. And then we're going to chain one just to secure. Okay, so just pull nice and tight on those tail ends. And you can snip off your green. And 
And then we're going to start on the main pineapple area. So we're going to chain three here. And in this row, that will count as our first triple crochet. Now turn your work and we're going to place, sorry, we're going to chain one more. We want to chain four here. So I beg your pardon. So that, ch that counts as a triple crochet. The chain three is a triple crochet and a chain one. Okay, now we're going to place a triple crochet in that next stitch. So ignore the first stitch. Your, your chain is the, the, the stitch that corresponds to that first stitch. Into the next stitch, place a triple crochet. Chain one. And into the next stitch, a triple crochet. So we're doing triple crochet, chain one, all the way along for this row two. So we're yarning over twice, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I've got a piece of Melba's fur on me there. Okay, so chain one and triple crochet in the next stitch. So I'm going to finish out my row two here. You do the same, just chain one, triple crochet, and I'll meet you in a moment. So I'm just finishing out row two here, placing my last triple crochet into that last stitch. Now just a reminder that your chain in this previous row didn't count as a stitch. Okay, so you just leave that unworked. Okay, so chaining four and four. Now that will count as a single crochet and a chain three. Okay, so in this first chain space, we're going to single crochet, chain three, in the next chain space, that chain one space from the previous row, single crochet, chain three. In the next chain space, single crochet. So we'll continue all the way down this row three with the chain three and single crochet in the next chain space. One, two, and three and single crochet. So continue on with your row three, finish that row out, and I'll meet you at the end of this row. Okay, so chaining my three, and then working my last single crochet into that last chain space there. Okay, so now we're going to start decreasing our, our stitches down to make this pineapple shape. Okay, so we're going to chain four again, three and four, and we're going to skip this first, this first three chain space and work a single crochet in the next three chain space. Chain three, and then single crochet in the next chain space. So this is how it's going to go from here on out. We're going to continue with this chain three single crochet, but at the beginning of each row, we're going to chain four and skip that first three chain space. So we can slowly decrease this down into our rounded pineapple shape. Okay, so continue on. We're going to do our chain three, two and three single crochet. Once again to the end of this row, and I'll meet you when we get down to the end here, and we'll go through one more time this beginning piece. But I think, um, well, I hope that it's pretty clear that we're going to begin each row with a chain four, skip that first chain space, and then work into the next chain space. Chain three, single crochet in the next chain space. Okay, so I'll meet you at the end of this row, and we'll, we'll start the next row again together. And then I'll let you move on and finish off your, your pineapple from there. Okay, so I've got my last chain three and single crochet in that last chain space. And then I'm going to chain my four and turn, skip that first chain space and then start 
my next row in the second chain space. Okay, and then I'll continue on from there. Two, three, and single crochet. So continue on. I'll meet you back um, when I get close to the bottom. Okay, so close to the end of my pineapple. And um, we'll finish off down at this bottom end together. So keep on going until you've decreased your pineapple as far as you can. And I'll meet you once I've done mine. And actually, I just want to jump in here. Now, if you're finding that your ends are folding up or folding under a little bit too much, you could add an extra chain at the beginning of the row. So if you're finding that that's happening, just add five chains at the beginning of your row. Four should be all right. If you just keep, you know, keep making sure it's flattening out. But otherwise, if you're having real difficulty with that, um, you know, don't just feel free to add that extra chain if you need to. Okay, so I'm getting down towards the end here. So I've, uh, I'm finishing off. So I've got two spaces here. So I'm working in that last space. And then chaining four. And turn. Skip that first space. And work into that last space. So eventually you've got just one space left. And you can just put a single crochet into that space just to finish that off. Okay, so I'll just make sure my pineapple is flattened out. So you've got kind of a, you know, a pineapple shape, kind of. This whole thing is actually called a pineapple stitch. Okay, so that's what inspired me to make this pineapple bandana. So that's, that's the finishing off of your pineapple. Okay, so this is, this is quite a delicate one because I've used a, a finer weight yarn than, the, than this one, which you can see has turned out much bigger. So this, I'm going to prefer this size for Malba, but you know, it's, this is also cute and delicate. So now what you can do is you can yarn over and pull through and cut off your yarn here. And just, you know, you can flatten out again. And then we're going to weave in our ends on the pineapple. So you can do this now or you can do it at the end. Let's do it. Let's do it now. So just thread your needle with your end one of your ends and then you're just going to weave weave your tail end into into your stitches so do the best you can because it's a, it's a pretty open weave stitch pattern here but just weave along your chains along your along your stitches actually let's go under here so just weave down and along and along as best you can and just be careful that you're not pulling that tail in too tight so you're not misshaping anything. Now I'll just weave that up there and in under here. So just change directions a couple of times and then once you feel satisfied with with where it's at. So I'll just make sure I've just pulled a little bit tight there. So yeah, just make sure you don't misshape anything. Just pull that back into shape. And then you can snip off that excess and go ahead and weave in your other tail ends on the pineapple. And we'll come back and we'll make our, our leaves and our ties for the bandana. And actually what I should say here is you can leave your green tails actually, or at least one of them, because you can use one of them to we, uh, to uh, sew on. So what we do, just to skip ahead a little bit, what we do is we attach the what we're going to make with the leaves and the the um, the ties. We attach that with stitches. But if you want to just sew down your 
so down your leaves a little bit so they sit flatter against the bandana then you can use one of your tail ends to do that I mean look if I'm sorry if I've if I'm too late to say that and you've already woven in your green ends it doesn't matter you can just use a piece of yarn you know a length of yarn um, afterwards at the end but I'm going to leave one of my tail ends my green tail ends unwoven in okay so I'm just going to sew weave in my yellow end and one of my green ends and actually I might even leave both of my green ends just to be safe so I'm going to weave in my my uh, my other yellow end and I'll join you in a moment so my apologies for not saying that sooner but you can leave those green tails unwoven just to to uh, you know to secure down your leaves um, eventually so I'll uh, I'll finish off this last tail end and I'll see you in a moment okay so there's my little pineapple part done so now we're going to return to our green let's just put that aside for now and make a slip knot onto your hook with your green and then you're going to chain half of the length or, or approximately half of the length of the tie that you need. So how we're going to do this, let's just show you with this one. So how we're going to do this is we're going to do half of the tie, chain half of the tie, make the leaves. And then we're going to chain the other half of the tie and then we're going to slip stitch down, attach with some stitches here and then we're going to slip stitch all the way down to the other end okay so that's how this will go so what you want to do now is is chain half of the length that you need for your ties or a little bit under half actually because you are you're allowing for this little area here but you know that's negligible really so chain one side of your tie so I'm going to go ahead and do that so I'm going to chain usually for these these sort of projects I chain around about a hundred to 120 so I'm going to chain 50 to 60 each side okay so I'm going to go ahead and do that now I'll chain my length that I need you work out what you need and that will depend on the yarn you're using your hook size and also your cat's neck circumference Okay, so Melba's neck circumference is about 24 centimeters. And then, you know, with this hook size and this yarn size, if I chain around 50 to 60 chains for each side, that's going to be enough. Okay, so you work out what you need according to those different factors. And I'll see you once you've chained half of your tie. Okay, so I've got my chain of 60 there. Now I'm going to chain an extra 10. So one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and this is going that ten chain is going to be our first leaf okay now in the second chain from the hook you're going to make a slip stitch and then again in the next chain a slip stitch In the next two chains, a single crochet. So single crochet. And then again, single crochet in the next chain. In the next three chains, half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And again, And a third time. Single crochet in the next. And then slip stitch in the next. Okay, so that's our first leaf. Now you can make as many leaves as you want. I'm making three. You could just make two if you wanted to. So, oops. Let's just show you on the previous one. So I've made three on this one and I'm going to make three again. But you could, you know, you could just make two, you could just make one, whatever works for you. But I'm going to make three again. So all you'll do is you'll chain another ten. Now if you want a little bit of space in between the leaves, you can add a chain or two here. I'm just going to go ahead and chain another ten. Go straight on to my next leaf. Two, three, four five six seven eight 
9 and 10. So I'm going to repeat that same process as I did for the first leaf and then I'm going to do it a third time. So I'm going to pause here, I'm going to finish off my next two leaves. You do the same and I'll, you know, make as many leaves as you want or as few leaves as you want. And uh, I'll meet you once I've done mine. So there I've got my three pineapple leaves. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in this other one and just check that that's what I want to sit across. Yeah, that's going to sit perfectly across there. So if you feel like you need to add another leaf, then, you know, go ahead. But I've got my three. And now I'm just going to chain the same as I did on this first side. So I'm going to go ahead and chain my 60. You go ahead and chain the same as you did on that first side, and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've got my next 60, and I'm just going to do one extra chain as a turning chain on this side. And then in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to start my slip stitches down the length of this first half of the chain. So make a slip stitch in each chain all the way down until you reach your first leaf. Okay, and then we're going to attach the leaves and these ties to our main little pineapple and then continue on to slip stitch along the other side. So I'll meet you once I've got down to my first leaf and you do the same and see you shortly. So I'm at my first leaf here. I've just got one more slip stitch to put in. And now, as I said, we're going to attach our leaves onto this area, okay? So how I do that, and you'll, you know, you'll have to work out how you do it depending on how many leaves you've got and the, the space, but I'm just going to, so I'm going to place a single crochet into the top of the leaf there, and then in between my chain or it's actually, no, it's not my chain, but in between my two double crochets in the back there. Okay, so let's just show you again. See, I've just got a gap in that those two double crochets there. I'm going to place my hook in there, and that's where I'm going to do my first single crochet. Okay, so you just do this however works for you. And then in the top of the next leaf, I'm going to insert that into the center at the back there. My next single crochet. And then the third leaf, insert my hook into the center of that third leaf. And then once again on the other side, I'm going to place it in between the chain and the double crochet there at the back. I'll just get those tails out of the way. There we go. And single crochet. So now those are attached on there. And you'll see that they might sort of stick up a little bit. And that's why I'm going to do the hand sewing later. You don't have to, you know, it's just an option. And then we're going to continue on along the other side of the chain with our slip stitches. You've probably guessed that by now. So just insert your hook into that first slip stitch, uh, first chain and slip stitch. And continue on until you get down to the other end of your tie. And I'll meet you down the other end. So I'm just placing my last two slip stitches in here Oops, yarn, there we go and then you can yarn over and pull through snip off your end and if you want to you can tie a little simple double knot in this these two tails here Wherever I can do that, I usually do. And we're going to, of course, weave in these tail ends. So go ahead and, and take a moment to weave in these, these two tail ends. And we'll come back and we'll do just that little bit of hand sewing together if you want to, if you want to do it just to uh, secure down those leaves a little bit more. And I've, as I've said before, I've left those two tail ends there to do that. So, and if you haven't, no big deal, just we'll take another length of, or you could even use one of your tail ends that you've sniffed, snipped off 
to uh, to sew that, but you or just a length of of your green yarn. But I'm going to go ahead and weave in these tail ends off camera, and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so that's done. I've woven in those ends. Now we're just going to secure these leaves down a little bit. So I just take one of my tail ends, and I might just tie a little knot in the end of those two tail ends as, again as well. And then I'm just going to take one, or if I need both. So as I said, if you haven't got a tail, these tail ends, you wove them in before I could get to my little apology for not saying leave those out. Then just take it, you just thread your needle with a length of yarn. And I'm just going to work down the back here a little bit. So until I get to my, my leaf. So again, there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You'll just go down a little bit. I'm just going to come up and into the back area here. And just secure that leaf down a little bit. And then I'm going to move. So just secure it where you want it to be secured. I'm going to move, move over to the back of the other leaf. So I'm just picking up a loop. So it's like I'm kind of weaving in these tails. And just move them into where you want them to be. I'm going to do the same with this last one here. So I'm just securing those down. And then of course with the other tail you can you can secure them even more if you want to, but if you're happy with where they're at, then you'll just weave in those remaining tail ends into the back of your work. So I'm going to pause here once again and just finish off weaving in my tail end, this last, very last one, and we'll come back and finish off together. So there's your cute little pineapple bandana all finished. Let's bring in my other one here. You can see, look at the difference in the size. So that this is a two weight yarn that I've used here. And this one here is, is a full weight in all, all intents and purposes a full weight. So you can see the, the difference. I kind of, you know, the delicate look is really cute. And, you know, I'll take some photos and show you the difference. But, um, you know, I kind of like the, the bit chunkier look, but that's just me. You know, you could, if you're using a finer weight yarn, of course, you could double, you could double strand and, and make a, a larger size as well. This would be perfect for a little kitten, but there's no kittens at my place right now. So, uh, you know, but it's, it's very cute anyway. I'll, I'll uh, take some photos of it on Melba and see how it looks. So thanks very much for being here. I hope you've enjoyed this fun little tutorial. And if you have the time, please send along your photos. I'd love to see them. Meet your cat. So send them along to catventurers.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurers.crochet. So thanks very much for being here and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Good girl, Melba. You're such a good girl. Thanks, baby. Yeah, you're a good girl. Yeah, good girl. Hey? Yeah, good girl. You ready? Ready to get down? <laughs>